We like breaking rules, and uh, we want to break one right now in traditional grow lights. Uh, we have a, a new idea from Biosonic we want to chat with you about today. Um, a lot has not changed in lighting uh, for many, many years, so let's, let's uh, throw away some old ideas and talk a little bit about what's wrong with plant lights right now in the market. Uh, right now, the uh, uh, current lighting we're using with HID is way too hot. We have the wrong type of light for plants. Uh, we're using people light, not plant lights. We waste too much electricity. We spend too much mine, money on it. We're not in control of the crops as much as we need to be. We're not growing enough yield. There's a whole bunch of reasons why the plant lighting we're doing today is wrong. Uh, really, nothing has changed for a very long time in lighting. Uh, most of our lamps we use today in grow rooms use electric filaments. The filaments get hot. They excite uh, electrons uh, from uh, mercury gas. The mercury electrons bounce off of a phosphor coating that coats the inside of our tubes, and that's what gives us light. It's uh, so very last century. The other issue is plants have unique needs. Um, if you look at this wonderful graph, the the, the colored section in the middle, that's, that's the light that we see, that people see. And that is the light that all the lighting industry talks about. When you talk about lumens and lux and foot candles, uh, we're talking about um, light in this region that humans see. The problem is plants are different than us. Uh, and if you look at this line chart, the line on the graph, that's the light that plants require. One of the reasons that plants are green is because they reflect all this green and yellow light back at it because they can't use much of it. They want blue light, they want red light, and they want it in very specific wavelengths. Um, this is called the PAR light curve. Let's look at it again. This is the same PAR light curve, the photosynthetic, photosynthesis active region curve. And here are some of the specific uh, chlorophyll um, spikes that we see in terms of making different types of chlorophyll or beta carotene again things that are really important for plant production so if you have plant lighting you need to be hitting this curve and you need to be paying attention to those spikes here's what sunlight does here's a spectrum of natural sunlight it's fantastic it also there's a lot of it um, so not only does it cover this broad spectrum but there's a lot of sun so if you're growing plants outdoors not an issue there's lots of light to go around Grow rooms are different. Grow rooms typically are dark without lighting, and all we're providing is from the lamps. So, um, again, here's the, here's the sunlight versus a PAR curve, um, and uh, let's look what happens when we put grow lights into it. Okay, here is one of the more common lights. This is a metal halide lamp. If you're using metal halide 400 watt lamps in your, in your grow rooms, this is what you see. A metal halide typically has a lot of the blue spectrum, it's kind of spiky. Most plant lights are spiky. So you see we, we have some, some spikes hitting up right up into the top of the, of the PAR light curve. We've got some wasted light here in the green area. And one of the issues with metal halide is we have very little red light. Um, so metal halide um, has some light. It does okay, but it's not exactly what plants need and you're wasting, wasting electricity. Here's high pressure sodium. Uh, this is one of the more common lamps used in, in um, plant lights 400 or 600 or 1000 water high pressure sodiums and it's such a bad light for plants we had to actually shift the par curve down to, to, to get everything on the same chart so this dotted line is still the par light curve that plants like but we've normalized this curve so that in this important blue light region um, the, H, the HPS the high pressure sodium is giving us hundred percent light to hit this little spot right here well, when you do that, when you, when you add enough high-pressure sodium to a grow room to satisfy the blue light requirements, which is important for growing the crop, you waste all of this light up here. This is the extra green light the high-pressure sodiums are putting in. So uh, it's a, this chart's a little bit different because we normalize the PAR curve, but um, it's, I, to me it's a very uh, telling chart because it shows exactly what's wrong with high-pressure sodium. Um, good for street lights, not so good for plants. Okay, so what if, what if we could build a better mousetrap? What if we could have a new idea? So the first different idea is using magnets, not filaments, to get everything going. So as you know, with, with, with magnets, you give a magnetic field. A magnetic field can be used for a lot of things, not just uh, moving iron filings around on a desk. It also can, can excite electrons in a tube. So if we take a glass sealed tube, put a phosphor coating in it, and a little bit of mercury, and we use an amalgam solid mercury for our mercury, um, 
and put two magnetic coils around this tube, we can create light. So here's what our lamp looks like. This is your basic induction lamp. Uh, it comes either circular or rectangular. I'm showing a circular one here. Here is the two magnetic um, inductors that create the magnetic field. Uh, what's interesting about these lamps, because they do not have a filament, is they can last for over 80,000 hours. Um, it's a whole story about lamp, lamp life there. We'll tell later, but uh, you know, plant lights are rated at 80,000 hours. They cost about half the price of LED lamps, so they're very cost-effective. And wait till you see what they do in terms of plants. So the second big idea, let's, let's do phosphor coatings inside the tubes that are just for plants. Let's stop using people lights for plants. Uh, we want more blue for leaf growth, and we want more red for flowering and bud initiation. So here is that par light curve again. Here's the dotted line about what, what plants want. Here is one of our collection of plant lights. This is one of our flowering lamps. Uh, you can see here in this purple line how we have a wonderful um, amount of blue light. And in this particular lamp, for one of our flowering lamps, we have a lot of red as well. Uh, we, do, we do spike over the curve in a couple spots. We do a little bit here in the green area, but not too much. Um, and uh, two of our big spikes are where plants want light anyway. So the good news here, we're adding plenty of light. So this is the difference of, of creating a lamp just for plants. Here I'm showing the same lamp versus a high-pressure sodium. In this case, we've normalized the PAR curve to our, our lamp. But you can see again how high pressure sodium is, is short in blue um, and uh, really way too long in green light. And, and all this is wasted light. All this is extra heat that you're having to remove. Um, you know, this is, uh, again, why you want to use plant lights for plants, not people lights for plants. Okay, idea number three is this heat issue. If you're using high-intensity uh, high discharge lamps, either high pressure sodium or metal halide, you know they're hot. Um, uh, when we measure the temperature on the bulb, um, or, or even more importantly, measure it in the fixture, we get these amazing hot spots. Um, and typically, the, the glass on a, a, a high pressure sodium or metal halide fixture will be over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, induction, because we don't have a filament uh, and we're not wasting light, induction lamps are, are run a lot cooler. Uh, typically, the lamps run uh, around 180 degrees Fahrenheit, so they're more than 10 times cooler than your current lighting situation. That does a whole bunch of things. It obviously makes it more comfortable for the dog. Um, more importantly, um, uh, it, it's better for the plants. You're not going to be burning plants. Uh, you're not going to be wasting more electricity than moving heat. So not only are you adding heat, too much of the wrong type of light, with uh, current lamps, but you're um, putting in way too much heat and you have to actually, in many grow rooms, put in uh, squirrel cage fans to take the heat out. That wastes electricity, um, uh, complete waste of money. I in addition, there's all sorts of pollution side effects. We'll talk about that in a different video, um, but uh, wasting electricity is not good for the environment. Uh, and there's see enormous plant benefits from lower heat. Um, uh, there's watering issues, there's nutrient uptake issues. Um, but the most important part, I think, is you can put the induction lamps right on top of the plant canopy. So you're going to get more light closer to the plants. Uh, more light is faster and, and, and uh, higher yields. Uh, typically with uh, these wonderful uh, magnetic induction grow lights, uh, we, we can put the plants between 8 to 15 inches right above the plant canopy. Um, so uh, again, running cooler makes all the difference. You're going to get you know, uh, more yield. Faster, faster plant growth. Okay, finally, uh, what would happen if we do something really out of the box and add an extra red lamp to trigger flower initiation? So this is a kind of a completely different idea. What, what would happen if you could li literally flick a switch and turn on flowering and bud initiation? So this again is gonna give you better control of yield and harvest dates. So here's what we, we're doing. We're taking our normal induction lamp, again, either circular or rectangular, and then we're adding a circular, uh, second circular lamp, uh, a redshift lamp into the middle of it. Uh, we're calling it our, our, our redshift donut for obvious reasons. Um, and it uh, gives you a chance to, to turn this additional light on when you want flower initiation or bud initiation and um, uh, uh, do an enormous, enormously good job on the plant side. We're calling this redshift um, and we're pretty excited about it. So here's, here's a look close up of a, 
the uh, the uh, Econolux uh, lamp, uh, the grow lamp on the outside, and then the, the Redshift donut in the middle. Again, these come either circular or rectangular. So let's play with a curve again. As you know, I like curves. So here is um, uh, our Redshift system. Here is just the growing, the outside bigger lamp on. Um, and you see we do a very nice job. And then look at the, the, the red area. Look over here um, and watch what happens when we turn the, the extra redshift lamp on. You know, we, 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 we add um, a lot more red light. Uh, we're able to, again, control, control the um, triggering of, lamp, of, of um, flowering and budding. So uh, very excited to see what happens with this redshift system. Okay, we have it in a rectangular format. So here's a not very good photograph of um, uh, someone who's retrofitted a rectangular redshift. So we have our rectangular lamp with a round donut, and this is put into a gull wing. Uh, here you see a retrofit kit comes with two lamps, comes with two ballasts, and the mounting hardware. And you would put this into your existing um, rectangular fixtures or horizontal fixtures. Uh, here's a uh, schematic of it again, showing the two the two ballasts, uh, the rectangular lamp, the redshift uh, donut in the middle, um, and this would go. With, this here we're showing a gull wing. It could go into really into any horizontal fixture. Uh, we also have them in a circular format. Um, here we're showing both lamps on. Uh, so here's the circular circular red uh, grow lamp with the the, the, the redshift donut in the middle. So, so here's um, uh, some of the, the wattages that uh, uh, you might use in replacement. Um, uh, 600 watt high pressure sodium is very common in grow rooms. Uh, you would very comfortably replace it with a 300 over 80 redshift lamp. That's 300 for the growing lamp, and then eight, the 80 watt donut. Uh, again, the 80 watt is only running at the end when you're doing the flowering part. So typically for, for most of the plant growth, you're, you're running only 300 watts. If you're replacing a 1,000 watt high pressure sodium, you might use two redshift lamps. Uh, these come in various uh, wattage combinations, uh, so we can mix and match depending on what, what, what's in the grow room. Uh, why are you doing it? For more parlight, enormously more parlight. Uh, again, a lot less heat. Uh, again, a dramatic amount less heat. Uh, those two things uh, mean you're using somewhere in the neighborhood between 50 to 70 percent less electricity than you're currently using. It gives you control over triggering flowering and bud initiation. You're going to get 80,000 hours of plant life, of lamp life rather, out of these, these lamps. Uh, enormous benefits for the grower. Uh, this is one of our charts that we have available that might help you uh, go through um, what, what combination of lamps um, you might use for the grow room. Again, we can help walk you through it for your customers. So, Redshift, a, a new idea in plant lighting, uh, Biosonic Technologies, uh, it's a company in North America who's uh, selling these to, to retailers. Um, let's just recap why. Again, the best light spectrum, cooler temperatures, lower electrical draw, longer life, uh, and then there's an enormous retrofit opportunity for your customers. Uh, grow rooms are full of metal halide and high pressure sodium lamps. Uh, for most cases, the growers can keep their fixtures, just replace the lamps. With a little bit of uh, creative wiring, they'll be in good shape. Uh, how to order and, and, and how to price. Uh, these are ordered directly from the factory in China. Um, uh, we can help arrange uh, freight and, and, and customs brokerage. Typically, a 30-day lead time is required um, uh, to make, get the orders placed, filled, and, 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 and delivered to your shops. Uh, prices are going to vary, of course, on volume, uh, as does the freight cost per unit. Uh, but I think typically we're looking at around a $500 consumer retail for a Redshift lamp. And that is a retrofit kit with two lamps, two ballasts, the mounting hardware to retrofit into your customer's existing uh, reflectors. Uh, we have a full lineup of grow lamps um, in addition to the Redshift. And uh, we will have some accessories to help in, the, in, in this process if needed. Uh, however, we think the biggest, the biggest opportunity is uh, the retrofit market. Uh, to order, just give us a call. Uh, Biosonics at 519-440-6751. Uh, and again, the orders are placed with the factory and shipped right to your store.